So this is, uh, you know, uh, how we actually go ahead and keep on uh, actually uh, training ourselves. Uh, the various kinds of modules which we have to go through. Everybody has to go through a console time of, uh, you know, 50 hours, which means that we have to do 15 different modules on the console. And then we are taken to the, uh, to the box training, which you can see over here. And then finally to the cadaver training, and then ultimately to the human training as well. So you can see that uh, uh, this is the... Um, uh, this is the uh, console where I am actually training my sur surgeons what kind of movement should be performed, what should be the movements at my wrist and then we also at the same time show them how to actually uh, set up the equipment and uh, where should be the uh, robotic arms placed and uh, you know this is a great learning process and this is the robotic arms placed on a cadaver and uh, uh, then we have got certain mock runs before we take uh, ourselves into the operating rooms. Definitely a mock run is done where the whole team is involved in doing these mock runs. And then ultimately uh, you can see that uh, I'll just show you this video, which is very interesting, uh, Professor Varis and me, because when you do, do robotic surgeries like when you're flying an aeroplane, it is a pilot and a co-pilot. So we have never done a surgery uh, which is without the involvement of two surgeons. We have now more people who have trained now, and initially I and Professor Varish will always sit down on a console and help out each other. This is almost a great collaborative learning. But we have moved forwards. Uh, recently we have done a workshop at King Edward Medical University where we had this virtual training which is Varish was doing. I kept a very early, uh, easy module for the orthopedic surgeons. The module was just about learning where is what human organ placed and as far as the anatomy is concerned, so this was an anatomy learning module. But we did go forward or you know, the console up there is just replaced by a VR, um, uh, you know, head cap. And then you have modules working in your hand. And this was the first workshop conducted at King Edward Medical University. And we taught orthoscopy to the orthopedic surgeons and in the process we learned ourselves, so this was a VR model. So now the latest innovation which is that now you can inject dyes while you are operating the ICG dye. This is known as line light and this is available with us. You can inject the dye and you can get a, like a Google map, you can get that where you are. So that this minimizes, it tells you where is the common bile duct, where is the uh, right hepatic duct, where is the cystic duct. So it, it actually simply minimizes everything. So. I must remind all of you that the future is here and uh, we have to do a, uh, a robotic surgery, uh, surgery registry has to be made but this is not a big problem because this is done automatically by the robot. We have to have certain legislative reforms and now we have already requested the CPSP to make sure that this is considered as a fellowship uh, which the President Saab uh, would like to commend. But to conclude that this is the surgery of the future, this is going to stay here and if you're not going to progress we are going to be left behind and the idea was there when I and Professor Varis went to the Sages conference uh, two years two and a half years back and we had 94 uh, papers in the Sages conference 93 were on robotic surgery 94 was mine and Professor Varis on laparoscopic adrenalectomies and we knew there and then that we are far behind the world and we knew that this paper of advanced laparoscopic surgery is just because they thought that they have come from a third world country, they are reasonable looking people, so we must include the Tars Khaakimara paper. Otherwise, we knew. So I left Professor Varis behind. I said, I'm going to go back to Pakistan. You get the robot. And getting the robot to Pakistan is a long story which Professor Varis and I know. I'm not going to repeat, but I'm extremely thankful to my team. The team which is there because without 
getting a team, you will not be able to perform this kind of procedures. So thank you very much for allowing me this extra five minutes. Thank you.